Yes, Roma wines taste better because only Roma selects from the world's greatest wine reserves for your pleasure. And now, Roma Wines, R-O-M-A. Roma Wines present... Suspense! Tonight, Roma Wines bring you Roddy McDowell in One Way Street, a suspense play produced, edited, and directed for Roma Wines by William Spear. Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines, those better-tasting California wines enjoyed by more Americans than any other wine. For friendly entertaining, for delightful dining. Yes, right now, a glass full would be very pleasant as Roma Wines bring you Roddy McDowell in a remarkable tale of... Suspense! Back home again. Back home on the street. Courtney Lane is what the sign on the lamppost says. But it's just the street to those that knows it hereabouts. And few that doesn't. What with the name it's got. As dirty, rotten, rum a spot as you'll find in the whole of London. Oh, gee, Georgie Williams back home again, are you? High time, isn't it? Quite a proper man. You've grown to be too. We've missed you, Georgie. More than I can say for you. Ah, you friend. The street. The only home I've had since my mum and dad was taken. The Blitz. That's how they got it. And now I came to live with my Uncle Bert. If you can call that living. Where I've been the last six months is due to him. Dartmoor Penn. One of his little schemes that he talked me into. Saying how safe it was. And it was for Uncle Bert. But not for me. Because Uncle Bert is a crook and a liar. He'd steal the pennies off a dead man's eyes. Only he'd never get caught. They could prove it on the dead one sooner than they could on Uncle Bert. Come on, come on, move along there. Hey, you there, just a minute. You're, uh, you're George Williams, ain't you? That's right, copper, what of it? Oh, nothing at all, me lad. Just mind you don't cut any fancy capers now that you're back. I can take care of myself, I can. Ah, and if you can't, there are those that can, you know. That's what it's like, being from the street. You're marked with it. If you're kin to Uncle Bert, it goes for double. But there's no place to go. So, uh, I'm going home. Georgie! Geordie Lang. Hello, Uncle Bert. Geordie, you're a sight for sore eyes. Like come on in, come in. Well, come on. I'm coming in. But there's no need to carry on so about it. Carry on about it? Why, you're the prodigal son you are, Geordie, my lad. It's the fatted calf for you. Come off it, Uncle Bert. You don't want me back. If there was any other place in the whole of England for me to hang my hat, I wouldn't be back. Oh, my boy, now that hurts, that does. To think you'd say that to me, what raised you from a young lad? Yeah, and got me a six-month stretch at hard labour to top it off. Downright ungrateful I am, eh, Uncle Bert? George, how was I to know you'd go ahead and do something I only spoke about in jest? Yes, but if I'd come home with a swag, you'd have had your share quick enough and know just about that. Well, I'm sorry for what happened, Georgie. Uh, you never know what I've been through blaming myself for it so well. But bygones is bygones. But come on into the bed, Paul, and I, I've got a bit of a surprise for you. Hello, George. Mrs. Pendry. Oh, you see, Bertie does remember me. Isn't that nice? Well, I, I couldn't very well help it, seeing all the errands I used to run to you from the shop in High Street. Hardly expected to see you down in these parts, though. Well, you see, I don't have the shop anymore. Oh, sold it, eh? Yes, and... Oh, Bert, you tell him. Tell me what? That's a surprise I was telling you about, Georgie Led. Mrs. Pendley and I got itched last week. We're married. So you see, George, you'll have to call me Aunt Edna now. Married? First swept me off my feet, he did. You married him? And why not? <laughs> oh, George, 
I know it seems a bit queer to someone your age, two people as old as we are. But we were both lonely. Since my husband died, I've had no and one. And she needs someone to take care of her. Can't get it back much now, you know. <laughs> my old heart. You remember, don't you, George? And so she let me take over the job and made me the happiest man in the world to boot. You do understand, don't you, George? Well, I, uh, I expect you'll be moving out of this rat hole, then. Both of you will go and live in your house, I expect, eh, Mrs. Pendry? It's Mrs. Williams now, lad. Aunt Edna. Aunt Edna, then. Well, you see, I don't have my house anymore, George. Ah, oh, there's a gabby lot around here. And, well, we didn't want to give them any chance to say I'd married Aunt Edna for her money. So I sold my house, too. But I don't care where I live, so long as I'm with Bert. And you're just as welcome here as ever. Even more. You have your room upstairs you always used to have and all. Oh. Hey, hold on. What's up? Where is it? Where's what? You know what. The picture. The picture oh. of my mother that was over the mantelpiece. Oh, Bert, I asked you to leave it where it was. There's a new mistress in the house now, lad. Never mind about that. Where's the picture? Hand it over. Well, I mind how you... Hand it over, I said. Oh. And it's no good raising that row because I can't hand it over. What have you done with it? You had no right to put your filthy hands but on you it. You must know I burned it. Burned it? The only thing I had in the world to remind me of her. Why, why, you rotten old... Keep away from me now. Don't you raise your hand to me. Oh, you are, you crazy young fool. Oh. Oh, now, 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 see what you've done. Why, oh. what's up with her? Shut up, you blithering idiot here. Give me a hand. Get her to her room. No, I... I don't need you both, but... If George wouldn't mind getting me a bit of my medicine. It's a blue bottle in the kitchen cupboard. A teaspoon and half a glass of water. Go on, don't stand there. All right, all right. Keep your hair on. Now, come along, my dear. Oh, thank you, Bert. Yeah. Now, now. Come on. Mm. on. On the bed with you now. Oh. There, there you are. Here's the medicine. Here, give it to you. Here, here. here drink this now, pet. Oh, thank you, Bert. Feeling better now? I'll be all right after a bit. I'll just lie here and rest for a while. If you don't mind. Right, you are. We'll be just outside here if you want anything. Come on, Georgie. I'm sorry to be such a bother. And thank you, George. Nothing to thank me for. It's a bad art of hers. Has me fair worried to death. I dare say. What's the game, Uncle Bert? Game? What game? You know what? This marriage business. You heard what she said? We was both lonely. Lonely. You're not tying yourself down playing nursemaid to some old A-bag because you're lonely. Not you. George, you're speaking of my wife. Your what? Your wife's money. That's all you've got your eye on. Oh, so that's it. Then why didn't I move into the fine posh house of hers up in High Street? Why didn't I? Because you'd rather have the cash, I expect. All right, suppose I do come into a bit of cash one day. One day. <laughs> if you can wait that long. And just what do you mean by that? I don't know. All I know is I'm not having any. I'm clearing out. Now, tonight. But I didn't go. Oh, I don't know why. That night when it was late enough so I reckoned they'd be asleep, I made straight for the kitchen. I was near dead from hunger, I was. I, I started rummaging through the cupboard. And then I saw it. Right next to a bottle of medicine. A little box it was, marked with a skull and crossbones. Poison. Rat poison. Hello, George. Edna. Why, what's the matter? Looks as though I'd scared you half to death. Who, me? Oh, uh, oh, no, no, you you just came on me a bit sudden, that's all. I, I didn't expect to find you up. I've been wanting to talk to you. Why? Why don't you and your Uncle Bert get along? Well, well, if, if you must know, Uncle Bert and I don't quite see eye to eye on one or two things. But, oh, well, I'll be out of his way soon enough. Never fear about that. George, I know Bert isn't all that... Well, I know what people say about him. But he's been good to me. Got his reasons, too, I dare say. He's a sharp one, he is. He's been good to me, and perhaps if he'd had a chance, if he hadn't been in the street... He'd have been a good man all his life. The street. That's what we all put our troubles onto here. The street. 
I know it's hard, George. But if maybe you could get yourself a bit of education... Oh, why, of course. All I have to do is trot along up to Oxford with the rest of the millionaire's son. Oh, no, I didn't mean that. Just learn a trade for a starter. And for the money? Well, I've got a bit of money. Oh, no, I, I don't need any help. Yours or anybody else's. Why, the last six months I've had about all the reforming I can stand. Oh, it's not that, George. You're like a nephew to me now. <laughs> You'd better stick to reforming Uncle Bert. He needs it as much as I do. Maybe even a bit more. Oh, oh, hello, Georgie. I told you you'd get hungry if you didn't eat. Hmm. Proper fortune teller, you are. What are you doing up at this time of night, Edna? You shouldn't be jumping up in the middle of the night with your heart and the shape it is. Oh, I heard, George. I just wanted to see if he was all right. Well, up along the bed now, there's a good girl. I'll take care of Georgie. Well, <laughs> good night. Good night, night. my dear. You're not in a proper mood, George. You'll never make your way in the world. Not the way you're going about it. I suppose you know just how to go about it. That's why you've lived in this filthy hole all your life. I wouldn't say that. But I know one way. Money's one way. And I've got me plans. What's this? This part of your plans, is it? That? What? Oh, it's rat poison, ain't it? I ain't never seen no rats around here. Well, there's no harm having a bit handy, is there? Hands of prevention is worth a pound of cure, you know. And a proper handy place you've got for it, too, haven't you? Right next to a bottle of medicine. Ah, so that's it. So now I'm a cruel and inhuman monster that would poison his own wife, is that it? I didn't say you would. But I, uh, I, I didn't say you wouldn't, neither. Ah, I think I got it all planned, eh? I slip her the poison and no one even bothers to ask why she rolled up because they all know she got a bad ticker. Is that the way you see it? I see you've done a bit of thinking at any rate. Now, look here, George, my lad. Even if I was the monster, you say, I'd be the last one to kill her. Don't you see? Not yet, I don't. I hope to make out her will, Georgie. I'll get the stuff anyway. I can afford to wait. I don't know about certain other parties, Georgie, that would benefit along with me. But I can afford to wait. <laughs> Suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you Roddy McDowell in One Way Street. Roma Wines' presentation tonight in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Between the acts of Suspense, this is Ken Niles for Roma Wines. The time-honored custom of making a good dinner better with wine is especially appreciated when the wine is distinguished Grand Estate. Let Grand Estate wine make your mealtimes more pleasurable. The simplest dinner becomes an adventure in gracious dining when enriched with a friendly glow of candlelight and the ruby redness of Grand Estate California Burgundy or the pale glinting gold of Grand Estate Sauternes. And how much more flavorful your dinner will taste served with a Grand Estate wine. For each Grand Estate wine is a distinguished limited bottling by Roma, America's greatest vintner. Each Grand Estate wine is born of choicest grapes, then patiently, unhurriedly guided to mellow rich perfection of taste by age-old skill, necessary time, and the unmatched resources of Roma master vintners. Tomorrow, give the magic touch of distinction to your dinner with a Grand Estate wine by Roma, the crowning achievement of vintner skill. And now, Roma Wines bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Roddy McDowell as Georgie Williams, with Raymond Lawrence as his Uncle Bert, and Jeanette Nolan as his Aunt Edna in One Way Street, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. I should have known it then. The, the day I found the rat poison, what Uncle Bert was up to. I knew he'd married Edna for her money. I knew he was rotten enough to... Well, I... I watched him like an orc. I fixed all the meals myself, seeing I wanted to help around the house. And the poison was always there, up in the kitchen cupboard next to a medicine, with the skull and crossbones on it. And 
the sea unbroken. Lord, you've seen it. Oh, hello there, Georgie lad. Just in time to have a spot of tea with us. Tea? Well, what's what about that? We're not toffs, perhaps, but we can have a spot of tea all the same, I expect. It was Bert's idea. Said it made us seem more of a family-like. Have a cup, Georgie? No, thanks, but I'll, uh, I'll turn the tray around for you, though. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, hold on. Looks a bit unsteady, but... Oh, there you are. Now, uh, you get Aunt Edna's cup, and she gets yours. But there's no matter, is it? Of course not. It's all the same tea. You don't mind, do you, Uncle Bert? Why, uh, no, no, why should I? Oh, it is nice to have a cup of tea about this time of day. I'd almost forgotten. Well, uh, drink up, Uncle Bert. It'll only get cold sitting there. Oh, what's up, Patty Shinari? I like it a bit cool on the, myself. Well, is there anything wrong with your tea, Bert? Mine's lovely. Shouldn't be anything wrong with it. Fix it himself, he did. Of course there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> no, lovers, Bert. No need to take it all down in a gulp. Think you were swallowing rank poison. <laughs> Something oh, stick in your throat then, Uncle Bert. <coughs> what is it? There, there. Uh, uh, oh, I've got to swallow in my windpipe. It's good, though. <coughs> Fix me another cup like a good lad, will you, Georgie? Uh, you can fill mine, too, if you will, George. <coughs> right you are. Do you know where the tea is, Georgie? No, I... No, it's in the kitchen cupboard. Right next to the medicine. You'll find it, Georgie. Right next to the medicine. But the tea wasn't next to the medicine. It wasn't there at all. Only the little box was there with the skull and crossbones. And still unopened. Poison. I found the tea and poured out the two cups. But all the time my eye was on the little box. And I was thinking how I had to get away. Had to get away. And about the money... And how easy it would be. And then it come to me, all in a flash, what Bert was up to. And why I'd done nothing about it. Because he'd known what I was thinking before I knew it myself. He knew what I was thinking out there in the kitchen right then. He knew I was thinking about... Murder. That night I hid the box. Didn't chuck it out, mind you. Only hid it in a place not too hard to find. Next morning it was back in the cupboard, right next to the medicine. Poison. No mistake about it now. Another of Uncle Bert's nice, safe little schemes. Safe for him. He'd all but come right out in so many words with it. Nothing to arrange but the terms. I knew he'd get to that too, once he was sure of me. All he had to do was wait, was what he thought. Wait for me to kill her. Hello there, Georgie Millet. Cleaning up the breakfast dishes, eh? Well, it don't look like I'm playing a ruddy game of darts, does it now? Uh, Georgie, I was looking for that rat poison last night. and the devil's own job to find it. I could have told you where it was. Found some rats at last, have you? Not in particular. Thought it best to have it out there where it's handy, though. Well, it's handy now, all right. So where I put it, did you? Now, look here, Georgie. You know how I feel about you. What's mine is yours. Whatever I have, or whatever I might get, share and share alike. Fifty-fifty. Partners. That's me. First I've ever known you to offer a bloke so much as a time of day. I might be the last two. But the one time might be worth all the rest, eh, hey, Georgie? Only times I've known you cheat your own grandmother out of the last two teeth in her head. That's as maybe. But if you're partners, you're taking your chances together, aren't you? Both of you in the same, for bad or for good. Got to treat each other fair and square then, don't you? If it's like that. That's how it is, all right. You think it over. See if it ain't. Bert. Oh, Bert. Yes, my dear? Could you bring me a bit of my medicine? Not taking bad, are you? Not bad, but a bit of the medicine might help. Right you are. Well, Georgie, you know how to fix it, don't you? I know how to fix it. I'll just nip along down the road then. Got a few things to attend to. But I'll be back 
in plenty of time. Mind you are, then. And Georgie, fix it right this time. I got the medicine and mixed it up as usual. But I, I scarcely knew what I was doing, because all the time I, I, I was thinking about the street, about my shirt that was always frayed and dirty, about my baggy second-hand suit, and how, well, well, what did she matter to me anyhow? She was a sure thing to roll up in a year or two anyway. What with that ticker of hers? And if she did now, I... I was free. Free. Next thing I knew, I, I, I'd opened the box and dumped enough of the stuff into a glass to kill a cart horse. And I, then I was carrying it into her, walking like in a dream, and wondering where my voice was coming from. It, it sounded so strange and far away. Just sit it down on the table, will you, George? right oh. Right you are, Aunt Edna. I hate to be such a trouble to you, George. You've been awfully good about the house here and all. Oh, it, it's no trouble. All the same. I know it isn't easy. Oh, I, I don't mind. Always used to help my mum about the house. You loved your mother a lot, didn't you, George? Yes, I... Yes, I did. I wish you'd do what I know she'd want you to do. If she was alive. What's that? Get away. Get away from the street. I know she's praying for that. Wherever she is. The street does things to people, George. Terrible things. Well, I... I will. I will get away one day. One day may be too late. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. Why don't you let me help you? I know she'd want that, too. Do you... Do you really think she would? Oh, I know she would. George, please. No, no, I, I said I don't want any help, and I, and I don't. <laughs> All right, George. I won't see any more. Hand me my medicine, please. What? My medicine. On the table. Oh, uh, here you are. Thank you. No! <gasps> George. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I slipped, I did. Did you? Yes, I... I thought you struck the glass out of my hand. No, 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 I didn't. A anyway, it's no matter. I I'll get you some more. George. Aunt Edna. Aunt Edna, you, you've got to get away from here. Get away? Yes, now, today, before it's too late. Perhaps it is too late. No, no, it isn't. Not for you. I can't get out of it. I, I never will, but you can. You've got money. You, you've got to go. Are you sure that's best? Oh, I, I know it is for everyone. Uh, for you, I mean. For your health. That's it. That's what I mean. I, I was thinking about, about your health. Oh, oh, you'll never get well here. You, you'll die here. I've been prepared for that for quite a while. Oh, Aunt Edna, not here. You, you've got to go. Promise me you'll go. Yes. Perhaps that is best. All right, George. I'll go. That night I slept. Really slept. For the first time in weeks. When I woke up, it, it seemed late. I heard the sound of dishes down in the parlor. I jumped into my clothes in a flash and looked down the stairs. They were having breakfast. Coffee. I, I seemed to turn all sick inside. I ran down the back stairs to the kitchen and over to the cupboard. The box was still there, but... But it was empty. The poison had been used since yesterday. I ran out into the parlor. Oh, thanks. I'll think I will. Edna, don't. Don't drink it. Well, what's good into you? Did you drink it, Edna? Tell me. My coffee? Why, yes. He's poisoned you. Shut up, you fool. I won't shut up. I knew he'd do it. Oh. He wanted me to, and when I wouldn't, he, he did it himself. But he won't get away with it, Edna. I, I've got to call oh. the police. I'll get you a doctor. George. No. Oh. Hey, you've set her off again, you fool. Get her medicine, quick. Aunt Edna. Get the medicine, I'll tell you. I'll see to her. Medicine. She's dead. Dead? Oh, don't try any of that, Uncle Bert. You poisoned her, you did, and, and I know it. I looked at the box in the kitchen, and, 
And it's empty. And I'm going to the police. George. George. Well? I swear I didn't. I, I, I swear I... Oh, that's holy. She, she made the coffee herself. She brought it out to me. With her own hands. She did? George. Call the doctor. She's done for me. So Call the doctor. Quick. So that's it. You've been the ruddy mastermind oh. so far. You get your own doctor. George. George. <sighs> so long, Uncle Bert. Happy landings. <laughs> I went next door and asked Mrs. Wiggins to call the police. Then I went back to the house. I picked up Edna in my arms and carried her to her room and laid her on a bed. I smoothed out a pillow for her head as though she was still alive. Then I saw it. The picture of my mother and the note. Dear George, don't be sorry for me. And don't think badly of me. I was wrong to close my eyes to things just because I didn't want to see them. But after yesterday, I knew you were right. And it was best for me to go away. Give this note to the police so that they will know it was me and not you that poisoned him. I found a picture of your mother in the attic. She was so beautiful that... I could see why even Bert couldn't really burn it, like he said. Take the money that I've left and leave the street. But carry her picture with you wherever you go. For I know she will always be watching over you, as she was yesterday, to keep you from harm. And so shall I. Your friend, Edna. Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines. R-O-M-A. Roma. America's favorite wine. Whether you're dining alone with your family or having guests for dinner, here's a smart, simple way to enrich your mealtime pleasure. To lend charming distinction to your table and enhance the hidden flavors of your favorite foods. Serve delightful, grand estate California Burgundy. The ideal flavor mate for hearty foods, red, robust, grand estate Burgundy, brings out all the taste goodness of juicy roast beef. Temptingly enriches the flavor of steaks. Sizzling chops or even plain hamburger. No wonder to discriminating wine users, Grand Estate wines are the crowning achievement of vintner skill. And all Grand Estate wines are distinguished limited bottlings by Roma, America's greatest vintner. Each is born of choicest grapes, then unhurriedly guided to rich taste perfection by ancient Roma skill, the magic of necessary time, and America's finest winemaking resources. With tomorrow's dinner, enjoy the rare taste luxury, the gracious pleasure of Grand Estate Wines, presented by Roma, the greatest name in wine. This is Roddy McDowell. I just wanted to say a few words in my own voice. It's been a very great pleasure for me to be able to appear on Suspense. Thank you, and good night. Roddy McDowell is currently appearing in the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer Technicolor production, Holiday in Mexico. Tonight's suspense play was written by Sanford Schlesinger and Robert Richards. Next Thursday, same time, you will hear Mr. Van Heflin as star of Suspense. Produced and directed by William Spear for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California. In the coming weeks, Suspense will present such stars as Glenn Ford, James Stewart. Make it a point to listen each Thursday to Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.